Yeah. Uh, most important thing, here's the deal, dude. Uh, I learned, I guess, that the world actually speaks to you. You have to stop and let it speak to you, and you have to probably have some kind of weird mind that will interpret what it said uh, and then have to believe that. <laughs> it's kind of easy. It's like this. I was going to quit. Oh, God. Beginning of this year. I was sick of it. And I don't mean quit because people would pay me like 3000 bucks a week to come and do the crap that I do. Uh, and so... Uh, uh, so I wouldn't have a big deal, but the nonprofit side of it was starting to bug me. Uh, and so I was like, okay, that's it. I'm out. I'm sick of the people. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'll just do it myself. And I'm on my way back to U from Houston. Uh, and uh, I get a call from the office people and they said, hey, are you going to the church? And I said, um, no, I quit. I'm not. And they're like, no, no, the, the, the TV's at the church. I'm like, I don't care. And they're like, no, no, you, you're promised. You know? And of course, uh, I don't remember that girl's name, the word, Valerie. Uh, she said, you gave your word. And I'm like, ah, okay. So I show up at this church, right? And I'm like, you know, okay, pull open the walls, cut the bees out, let's go. You guys want to interview? All right, yeah. And then one of the guys that worked for me said, hey, Walt, look, look up there. And I'm like, uh, okay, why? And they go, dude, turn around and look. And I'm like, what am I looking at? And the guy goes, the stained glass. And so I turn around and look, and in this church that was built in 1888, uh, there was a five foot stained glass and the stained glass was a giant beehive. And so I'm like, uh, okay, so the world is going to speak to me. And I figure, okay, coincidence, I'm trying to find a way out of it. And uh, uh, so then uh, I say, okay, well, let's pull this out. I'm like, that's really cool. And then the southern exposure, the light made like a spotlight right onto the pulpit where this dude was speaking. So whoever built that stained glass, knew something about light and what was going to happen. And so it was like straight out of a spotlight right onto where this preacher dude spoke. So we get the ladders and we get going, etc. And I'm still trying to find a way out of accepting that beehive and the stained glass as, as, as the universe speaking. And we get to the actual beehives. There's not just one, there's three. So we end up with the holy trinity of bees. Uh, facing uh, south, north, and, and east. No, north, east, and west is where the three beehives were. And so I called my son, who's uh, doing a preacher thing. Uh, he's going to be a Baptist preacher one day, he says. Uh, and I talked to him about it, and I said, hey, and these, there's three, and there's this, that, and the other. And I said, is it like blasphemy to, uh, to call this the Holy Trinity of Bees? And he started laughing. He goes, no, and the, the north, east, and west is also a, a, a phrase or a line or something in the Bible that deals with the Holy Trinity. And I'm like, oh, no shit, that's pretty cool. So I'm like, at that point, I'm like, my twisted mind goes, okay, that's it. The Holy Trinity of Bees, the, the beehive, I'm in the right business. I'm not going anywhere. So that was the day I decided I can't quit anymore. And, and back to the world speaking to you, that's kind of what I've learned. Is that, uh, There's a place, there's a time probably, and if it's not, it's just because you're making it up and that's what you want it to be. And so if that's the case, then okay. And don't yell at the people that work with you. <laughs>